When I was researching for the questions for this front-end machine coding interview series, a lot of candidates told me that the interviewers love to ask questions around timers. And the common questions among these are building a stopwatch or the most common one is building a countdown timer, which is what we are going to discuss and build in today's video. So as you can see, we have hours, minutes and seconds to enter. So if I let's say enter one hour, um, 20 minutes and 30 seconds, let's start. Okay, this seems to be working fine, no problem. We can pause it, we can continue it as well, and we can also reset. So if I press reset, yep, you can see the timer has been reset. Now, if let's say our time is about to end, if I put it five over here, or you know, 12, because I want to show you something. So if we start, so you're gonna see after 10 seconds, like, I mean, before 10 seconds, it's gonna be 0908. So there's a proper formatting for everything. And notice when this ends, the state will again reset and it's gonna be start over here and all of our hour, minute and second will display zero. Now, if I only put hour section over here, when I start this, it's gonna fill this minutes and seconds as well accordingly. So if I click on start, yep, there you go. Now you might be thinking that what if I enter a value more than 60 minutes or 60 seconds? Let's see what happens if I enter, you know, 62 or 65. And seconds can be, let's let's just keep the seconds as it is for now. And if I press continue, yep. Did you notice something? So those 60 minutes got converted into an hour and the remaining five minutes will remain as minutes over here. Now, similarly for seconds, if I say 70 seconds and continue, yep, did you see? Those 60 seconds got converted into one minute and the remaining were added to this second section. So we're gonna take care of all of this formatting and edge cases in this video. So let's get started and the complete code for this app, you can find it on my GitHub, link for which will be in the description down below. So I've opened code sandbox over here and I'm gonna create a new project in vanilla Java. So I'm gonna clear everything that's over here, everything over here as well. And in the index HTML, I'm just gonna write some basic boilerplate code for our HTML. I'm gonna give this title of count down timer and I'm gonna connect my JavaScript and CSS. So script tag, script src dot slash c slash index dot js, which is inside over here. And a link tag to connect our CSS, which is inside styles dot CSS. Cool. Let me just put this link tag up over here near the meta tags. Now let's go on and create some basic HTML structure for our app. So I'm gonna have a div over here with class name, oops, div with class name of container. And inside of this div basically will be whole of our app. Now inside of this, I'm gonna have a span with the class name of container title. And I'm gonna have countdown timer inside of this. Now, as I mentioned in the previous video, this way of writing CSS class names is called BEM convention. You can read more about it on Google. It's basically to make our CSS classes more readable and helps us to understand where to which div a, a particular class belongs. Now below this, I'm going to have another div with the class name of container labels. And inside of this, I'm going to have three paragraph tags. And since this is nested more further inside of this CSS class, so I'm gonna say dash dash single label. And I'm gonna have three of these, so into three. Yep. And one will be called hours, other will be minutes, and third will be seconds. Now, what else are we gonna have below this? We're gonna have the inputs. Inside of this, where we're gonna input our hours, minutes, and seconds, right? So I'm gonna have a separate div for that called container inputs and inside this I'm gonna have our input tag so the input tag class name will be container inputs dash time dash dash time now this is going to be our for, for our r and this is going to be the type number this will have max length of 2 this is going to have a placeholder of 00, 0 by default and this is an issue over here so if we you know type something inside of it you're going to see that this exceeds the max length of 2 because max length only works on type text so now yep you see 
but we only want number so that's our an issue so we we're going what we're going to do is we're going to say type number and i'm going to say on input this dot value will be this dot value dot slice now what slice does is slice basically takes a certain part of that string so if i say from 0 to what our max length is so from 0 to our max length so this dot max length so now this will only take first two characters of our string so if i try to enter hmm? oh okay this is going to be max l capital length so l capital yeah this should work now i guess yep this is working cool so over here max length will be in the camel case but over here max length will be max and l small right now if you type this yep you're going to see it only enters the first two numbers so cool that's our first input now we need a colon to separate hours and minutes right so i'm going to have another paragraph with the class name of also this class name is also going to be have r in it so that we can target this separately when necessary then we're going to have p dot container inputs and colon so we're going to have two of these so i'm going to say multiply by 2 yep cool now after this i'm going to have minutes and then after this one we're going to have a seconds input right i'm just going to copy paste this one over here as well and in for this one i'm going to say minutes or minute and for third it's going to be second all right this looks good let's try to enter things over here cool everything looks fine let's have our three buttons start stop and reset after this dev i'm going to have another dev called container btns and inside of this i'm going to have three button with the class name of btn so multiply by 3 and there we go now first button will be called start stop and the third one will be reset okay and all of these buttons also are going to have an individual class name so start stop and reset all right so i guess that is what our basic html is going to look like and let's start styling this so inside of the styles.css i'm going to first have margin padding to 0 0 yeah you can see uh, all of these uh, boxes had default margin and padding which got removed now so it's better to work with now inside of the body we're going to have a height of 85 viewport display flex and flex direction is going to be column now after this i'm going to align all of them to the very center of the screen so justify content to center and align items to center now i'm going to have some gap between them of 20 pixels and some font family of sans serif fine now let's uh, style them one by one i'm going to style the container title first so this is going to be some generic styles nothing special so 10 pixels up and down and 20 pixel left and right a font size of 40 pixels text a line of center now for this complete container i'm going to have some height and width display is going to be flex and flex direction is going to be column okay that's fine and i'm going to have some gap between these as well so gap of 10 pixels probably now i'm going to style these labels inputs and buttons so they're all going to have some common style of display flex so and justify content to space between just like that so that they all are aligned at their places also you can use over here css grid as well but i'm not going to use css grid as this will this tutorial will be more complex and a lot of people are comfortable with flexbox so i think that's fine also if you don't have knowledge of flexbox you can watch this tutorial that i have created already now let me just uh, style container btn first of all margin top to be 20 pixel now let's just style these labels pretty quick 
width is going to be 20 percent and i'm gonna have text align to center font size to 30 pixels and some padding of 5 pixel up and down and 10 pixels left and right now to style each of these individual input items so i'm gonna have container inputs time so i'm gonna give it border border to be none font size to be 50 pixels width of 90 pixels and some height of 50 pixels okay that looks good if i enter something awesome but i don't want this outline to be over here so outline to be none also i don't want this uh, arrows over here as well so i'm gonna remove that i'm just gonna simply say input webkit outer spin button and inner spin button to be margin none and webkit appearance none obviously you won't be able to remember all of these things so i think you can ask the interviewer to for googling this else i don't think that's gonna be an issue for the interviewer it's just the styling now let me style those colons also i notice i haven't added any colon in between so just add them yeah they are smaller currently they're small currently and yeah you can see they are a little big so this is just nothing it's just font size margin and some padding over here and let me just style these buttons and i'm going to quickly bring in the style so that i don't waste much time so width is going to be 48 percent height will be 50 pixels font size border none border radius there's going to be some border radius some cursor pointer and color will be white so we haven't provided the background color let me just do that real quick so all of these are gonna have different different background colors so start is obviously gonna have a green color and stop and reset are gonna be having orange and orange red color also you can see i have made display none for the stop because obviously when the start is there the stop is not going to be there when the stop is going to be there the start is going to be there so if i say display none uh, i mean remove the display none you're going to see that all three buttons are there cool so yeah with this we are done with our html and css part of our app now let's go on and write the javascript or the logic for our app but before that if you're preparing for a front-end interview and you would like me to help you in your front-end interview preparation you can click the link in the description down below and book a call with me we're going to discuss tips tricks and i'm going to guide you on all of the things that you need to do and follow the roadmap to prepare for your front-end interview and also i'm going to provide you a lot of valuable resources so click the link in the description down below and book a call with me Okay, so I'm going to go to our index.js file and first of all, create an ify. So what's an ify? Let me show you. So this is an anonymous function over here. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to call it right away. So what's going on over here is I've created a function wrapped it under a parenthesis and I'm calling it right away so that this function gets executed. And why do we use ify? So ify helps us to secure our data. It helps us to secure our private information and all of the variables. So that's why it is recommended to use an ify. So first of all, what I'm going to do, I'm going to target all of these DOM elements that I'm going to use. So first of all, for our minute and second, I'm going to say where document dot query selector and i'm gonna target dot r similarly i'm gonna target minute and second as well just like that and also we're gonna target all of these buttons so start stop and reset so like that let's initialize a new variable for our timer so basically we're gonna run a timer right uh, we're gonna run a set interval for that we're gonna initialize it inside of a variable so that we have access to that timer throughout our app so it's gonna be null by default and i'm gonna say start btn i'm gonna take the start button and add an event listener to it which is gonna be listening to a click event so this is gonna be the action an anonymous function and first of all i'm gonna say if our minute and seconds are empty then we're gonna return we're not gonna do anything so r dot value equals zero i'm gonna copy this so if uh, all of these are empty then i'm gonna simply say return cool now after that we're gonna start our timer or set interval so i'm gonna have another function in here called set interval Whenever we start our timer, we're going to change this start to stop. 
right so over here i'm gonna say start btn dot style dot display oops style dot display to be none this is gonna be none but for a stop button that is going to be be displayed so stop btn is gonna be initial so obviously if i click on it okay this started this shouldn't have started because these are empty you know okay this is going to be double equals actually because we're comparing number with a string right so either we convert the type into the same type or we can use double equal which is not the strict equality and triple equals is a strict equality check so if i press start now yep you're gonna see i won't be able to press start so if i have something in here and if i press start yep you're gonna see we get the stop over here cool now inside of this i'm gonna start our timer so count down timer is going to be equal to set interval and our set interval will run every one second and inside this i'm going to call a function called timer which we haven't yet created so let's go and create this so after this i'm going to say function timer now this timer function is the one where all of our important logic will reside. So first of all, we're going to check if our timer is running already, right? And the seconds reach zero. Then what we're going to do, we're going to empty all of these to the default state. So I'm going to say if our value, minute value and second value are all zero. Then I'm going to say our dot value to be empty. Similarly with second minute as well this is going to be second right and i'm gonna stop the interval which we haven't yet created so let me just create that as well function stop interval we're gonna get back to this later let's just move on with our timer logic for now now apart from this if that's not the case else we're gonna check if the second value is not equal to zero. So second not equal to zero. Then what we're gonna do? We're gonna continue the timer and reduce the second, right? So second, oops, second dot value will be, I'm gonna put it inside the template string. I'll tell you why in just a second. So first of all, I'm gonna have to check if it's less than 10 seconds or more than 10 seconds remaining, right? So if the second dot value is less than or equal to 10 seconds so it's gonna have a zero appended to it else it's gonna be nothing and after that i'm gonna simply put second dot value minus one second dot value minus one hmm, i think this should uh, trigger some basic functionality let's try to put 15 in here press start uh maximum call size exceeded Oh, sorry, I've made named this as set interval. This should be start interval. I shouldn't be using keywords over here. So now if I start it, yeah, cool. I was calling set interval instead of start interval. So yeah, now if I try this, if I put 15 in here and start, you're gonna see it's normal 15, 14, 13. As soon as it crosses 10, it's gonna add a zero in here so that it maintains the formatting. And as soon as it's over, obviously nothing's gonna happen because I haven't written stop interval function yet but it puts zero zero on all of these. Now we're gonna check for another case. So else if minute value is not equal to zero, but second is zero. So I'm gonna say minute dot value. That means all of the seconds have passed and now we're supposed to reduce the minute, right? So minute not equal to zero and second dot value is equal to zero. Mm, value is equal to zero. Then we're simply gonna say second dot value to 59. Obviously, because we're gonna again start the seconds. So second dot value equals 59. And minute dot value, it's gonna be similar to this one, uh, whatever that we've written over here. So I'm gonna bring it in. Instead of seconds, I'm gonna say minute for all of these. Uh, let's see, let's see if this works. So I'm gonna put one minute over here and five seconds start. Three two one and now nothing happened okay i get it so this is going to be second dot value not just the second so yeah 
I think that must be the error. Let's try this again. Cool. Yeah, that's working absolutely fine. Now, same thing we are supposed to do for R as well. So I'm going to copy this up and paste over here. So if R dot value is not equal to zero and minute value is equal to zero. So I'm going to say minute to be 60. And over here, R is going to be reduced by one. Let's see if this works. So I'm going to put one over here. Let's start. Okay, that's working fine. What if what about R? So if I you know reduce it. Cool, that's working absolutely fine. Awesome. So we have all of the basic functionality for the timer completed, but we haven't yet touched the formatting functionality, right? What if we enter something more than 60 or seconds are more than 60 in minutes or seconds, right? So we're supposed to take care of that. So let's just um, above this. I'm going to say if second dot value is more than 60, I'm just going to simply say minutes value will be increased by one. And the seconds value will be decreased. So parse int, I'm going to convert it to the int second dot value minus 59. So now if I enter something in minutes and seconds is more than 60, so um, let's say 70 and start. Yep, it got added in the minute. Similarly, we're supposed to do it with minute as well. So if minutes value is more than 60, so R value will be plus and minute value will be minus 60. So if I enter R and minute, let's say 65 and second, let's say I'm going to keep it under 60. So 50 and start. Okay, yeah, that works absolutely fine. Cool. So we are done with all of the important features. The only thing that's remaining is stop and recent functionality. Also, we have to add that continue button whenever we pause it in between, right? Dot add an event listener, add a click event. And whenever we click on it, I'm gonna say stop interval. And I'm gonna call it with pause parameter. So that we know that we are supposed to pause it right over here. So now if we go inside of a stop interval function, I'm gonna take a param inside of it called state. So I'm going to check. So if the state is pause, then I'm going to say continue else I'm going to say start, right? So start btn dot inner HTML. I'm going to say state. If it's equal to pause, then I'm going to say continue else. I'm going to say start. Now after this, we are supposed to hide the stop button and again display the start button. So and also we're supposed to stop the timer. So I'm going to say clear interval and I'm going to provide it our variable, this variable. So clear interval and our countdown timer variable. Okay. Um, most of these things looks good. Let's start the timer and try. So D3 stop, stop. Yep. You can see continue over here. Okay. We continued if you press again. Yep. You can see the time has stopped now. Cool. So this is all working as expected. Let's just add the reset timer functionality now. So basically reset timer. If we click on reset, this should put all of this to zero. So I'm going to say reset btn dot add event listener, a click event to it. Now I will say r dot value to be empty. All of these are going to be empty be empty and simply we're going to call the stop timer. All right. So this should be working fine. Now let's add something and try to run this start. Okay. Stop reset. Fine. So everything is working as expected and that was it for this countdown timer. So if you like this video, give this video a huge fat thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for more such awesome front end interview videos. Now, if you want to see more such front end machine coding interview videos, the link to the complete playlist will be in the description down below. And also if you want to book a one on one call with me, the link to that as well will be in the description down below.